Right, after getting started, right, so you've gone out and bought yourself a cage or you've gone and built an aviary. Uh, if it's in the garden, obviously it would be, if it's, a, if it's an outdoor aviary, you're going to want to you're gonna uh, want to place it somewhere where it's in a well lit position, where it's going to get sun most of the day. The best, it's usually the part in the garden which gets the sun the most of the day. Uh, but you don't want the full aviary in full view of the sun or else the birds will eventually cook in the hot weather. So part of the aviary you're going to need to section off. Um, just, just basically so it's shaded and you want the roof on the shaded part covered as well just to stop the sunlight from peering through. Um, and then the other side they can go in there when it gets hot and they can sunbathe and bathe in the, in the ground etc. Dust bath. Um, when it gets a little bit too hot, they go back on the other side into the shade. Um, when the weather gets really windy and gets cold, you're going to want to put some kind of panel paneling up. Something like uh, most people use uh, clear perspex. You can use polythene or tarpaulin, something like that, and just <coughs> just cover the front uh, and then the top. During the winter time, with foreign finches such as um, birds from Australia. Um, it's the wind more than anything. It's not so much the cold, it's the wind that they don't like. They don't like drafts. So during the colder periods you're going to have to completely cover it. Top, bottom and sides. You don't want it in a windy location so make sure that nothing can get in. You want it well lit so they can see but they don't want they don't want all the, the wind blowing through because that's what kills and that's what generally kills the birds. It's not so much it's not so much the cold that kills them, from, you know, from what we know, it's, it's basically the wind, the cold wind. So, but if, if preferably you want to keep that temperature above 60 degrees, so you're going to need some form of a heater. It doesn't have to be anything expensive, expensive sorry, you can use, um, actually if you've got an outside aviary, you could probably use solar panels on top as, as a source of power, and then just have some of those um, long tube type heaters, uh, cylinder types or you could use oil fill he uh, heater but they're quite expensive to run and I find if they get too hot birds sometimes sit on them and they end up cooking themselves so you want something that gets warm but not too hot something they can sit on something around 85 degrees go maybe up to about 90 degrees or something in temperature so that they've basically got a nice stream of warmth coming out because you want an ambient temperature you don't want it hot and you don't want it cold you just want that nice ambient temperature and something that if they sit on, like I say, they're not going to cook. So, and another thing you want to bear in mind as well, if you've got them outside, is think, think about cats and, and other predators of bird of prey, because sometimes you get your birds sitting next to the aviary and um, uh, they'll rip the birds through the wire and rats will do the same thing. So if you've got a problem with uh, rodents in your uh, in your location, I'd think, you know, bear that in mind, make sure all the floor is ideally, the floor is best con it's best to have it concrete um, <coughs> make sure it's concrete so that nothing can get through snakes uh, things like large snakes as well have been I've seen reports of uh, snakes eating your birds so if you've got them outside to be careful as well from that you might want to double check around on the stones and anything you've got laying down nearby where you might have um, predators laying uh, living uh, hiding etc uh, birds kept on the inside are probably a lot easier, you don't have to worry about predators so much apart from cats um, and children as well because a younger child, young child may go into the cage, catfish catch the bird and may harm it in, in any way so when, you, when you've got your cage, if you're having it indoors, you want to think about uh, whereabouts exactly you want to place it and the place that you want to put it is somewhere where there's not so much foot traffic Birds are, birds are generally, especially finches, they're natural, um, they're natural prey in the wild. So, of course, they're very jumpy and they're very frightened. So where you put them is very important, important in the house. You want them, again, near a window where it's very, very bright. But again, you don't want the whole a the whole cage or aviary lit up. You only want, um, well, most of it, but a section where they can go if it gets a bit too hot or it gets a bit too sunny for them. Because sometimes they get a little bit hot as well, even if they're tropical birds. And they like they like to cool down a bit. Uh, another thing is uh, foot traffic. You don't want it where there's a lot of people walking backwards and forwards. You've got lots of loud music going on all the time, and 
finches don't like that, they do like their quiet. I know they, they do make a lot of noise, but it's their noise and it's their noise that they're used to. They don't, they're they not used to like human noise and kids, children and kids running around screaming and shouting and fighting and they don't like what it frightens the death out of them and they don't live very long. They're very nervous. The finches are very nervous like by nature, so it's just another thing to bear in mind. Um, so once you've, um, if you if you can't put it next to a window, you can buy su um, supplemental lights. You can get um, ultraviolet lights, which is a UVB, which lets off a, a ultraviolet in the in the right spectrum for that particular species of birds and you know where they come from in the world. Um, they're not really cheap. They're, they're not cheap to buy, I don't think, but they're certainly not that cheap. Um, expensive to run. They're very quite they're quite cheap really to run. And they can last uh, a good bulb would probably last six months or a year. So I mean, depending on the size of the bulb, the, the wattage, it's, it's all important, and the type of bulb. So um, I normally go for a fluorescent um, 18 watt bulb. It's about three, about three foot, two foot, two. I think it's actually two foot. Um, and that would probably do a three foot cage, no problem at all, no problem whatsoever. And you'll need another bulb as well if you're going to get an ultraviolet, so like the natural daylight. So you've got the natural daylight, which is the white, and you've got the blue tint as well. So it fluoresces their feathers and they get the vitamin B from it as well, which they would normally get from the sun. They're not as good as the sun, obviously. Nothing beats nothing beats natural daylight, but it's better than nothing. And it does illuminate the cage where the birds can see quite, you know, and they look nice as well. Um, so if you've got all your cage and you've got your location, and you've got an idea where you where you want to put it. The next thing to do before you put your birds in there is um, set the cage up. You need to think about what perches you're going to use as well. I mean, I know that most cages come with perches already, or you get the dowel, which you can buy cheap dowels, which are well, well, whatever length you want, really, and whatever thickness is. But I don't really, I I wouldn't say have them all the same thicknesses. I usually, if I have a dowel, I will cut chunks out of it here or there and kind of rub it down with rough um, with a rough sandpaper because you don't want it all smooth, it's not good for their feet. They like the rough textures and they, in fact they like different textures and they like different lengths on their feet. Um, if the birds end up with the same thickness all over, all through the cage, wherever they stand, eventually they get arthritis in their feet, in their feet, in their claws and etc. And it is, well not their claws but in their feet. Um, and it's not good for the bird at all, especially later on in life. It doesn't it doesn't affect them straight away. It's when they're a bit older, they get problems. They can't stand properly, and they can they end up falling off perches, etc. And they can't move their feet because they've got arthritis or you know cramps and that whatnot. So and I always I always go for branches. I take all the dowels out, all the natural these plastic perches. They all look nice and they're easy to clean, but they're, they're just not good for your bird. You want natural natural branches. Same from a fruit tree, like um, an apple, apple tree branch, plum, stuff like that is normally quite good for the bird really, I've always found, and they have quite various textures all the way through, and they have different thicknesses as well, so, I mean there's, as I said on the, I think it's in the last video, um, you can look online if you're not sure which branches you can use, which you're worried about, if it's safe, if it's not safe, so you can get to find out what branches you can use. Another one you can use is branches from um, <coughs> bamboo. <coughs> the only problem is bamboo is very safe, but the texture is very smooth. There's a very smooth texture, and it's, you normally find it's, it's kind of it's the same diameter all the way across. So it's all right. I mean, you can use bamboo. I mean, it's safe for them, but I don't really like using bamboo. If I can help it, I do have some in my aviary, but I try not to put too much in there. I like the normal branches. Um, a conifer, um, normal ever, evergreens, you can use probably pretty much most branches from those as well. I've never had any problems with branches from evergreens and the birds don't mind pecking on the on the little buds etc or um, the bark. It doesn't do them no harm at all. I've never had any problems with it and um, you get some nice textures on there and quite some nice long lengths as well and some of it can be quite bushy and sometimes I actually leave the leaves on there as well so because it's quite a nice smell. I like the smell of it, and it doesn't bother the birds. Uh, where you place the branches, you're going to need you're going to need more than one, definitely because birds obviously need to fly perch to perch and not hop. They need to fly from perch to perch, and um, I, I like to put a few on one side and a few on the other, not just one on each side. 
I like to put a few because they like to hop around and, and then fly to the other side and have a little hop around etc. That's what they like to mooch around. They don't want they don't want to be in a cage where there's nothing nothing to stand on. They they need lots of perches etc. So they can play in and out. Um, you want to make sure your drinkers, your feeders are nice and clean, and then you organise them, put them where you want them, fill them up with your food and their drinks. Uh, put your cuttlefish in there, your cuttle bone. Like I say, you don't really need a whole one, just put a bit in there. Um, you can get mineral blocks. I don't really like mineral blocks as a rule. There's a lot of complications with them, got lots of complications with them sometimes because of the ingredients, and I don't know, they're just not that great. Um, toys, such as, uh, they don't like, uh, finches don't like colourful toys, but it's like, like like the things you'd give a dog or a cat. They're, they're, I've seen it so many times. So the things you give for a budgie or a, a parrot, they're, they're, they're finches. They're not, they're not hook bills or anything like that. They're completely different species. They like dangly things. They like, um, like get yourself a nice bit of hemp, uh, hemp string. Tie one in to a branch where it overhangs onto another branch and from underneath they will pull it. And it's good exercise for them because they're tugging at something. And hemp is totally harmless to them anyway. And it will last for ages, and it's not likely to do them any harm. Um, eventually, they'll probably pull it apart, and there's nothing left. And of course, you have to take it out and just put a new one in there, and it doesn't cost anything. But don't don't use things like um, nylon string or anything like that, because it's nylon. It can be a nightmare. They get it all tangled up, and then get it tangled around their feet, and then they're gonna have problems. Uh, and then you're gonna want to put your flooring in, or your substrate for the floor. Some people use. Uh, AstroTurf, which is fake grass, and that's good if you can get a good quality one. And the good thing about it is it's very easy to clean. And then you wash it, hose it down, or you can put red hot water over it just to sterilise it, whatever. I mean, bleach it as well, and then you put it back in when it's all dry. And it saves having to keep buying new materials. And you, it's also good as well because if a bird falls off on the, over the, overnight, it falls onto a nice spongy surface, so it doesn't hurt himself. And uh, so um, yeah, it's quite cheap anyway. As long as you don't, if you get the bigger, the, the bigger the cage, obviously the bigger the piece and the more expensive it's going to be. It's not really cheap, but it's, I wouldn't have thought it was that expensive. But it's worth the money in the long run because if you're going to keep buying wood chips or whatever you want to use as your substrate, it will cost you money eventually. And another thing I did want to mention, or I forgot to mention last series, don't use sawdust. Don't use anything dusty or anything like that. Definitely don't use sand or grit. I know you can get sandpaper and all that lot for your, for your bottom of your budget. It's really not good at all. Because the birds sometimes they chew it and it's undigestible. They can't they can digest it because it's glass. And what happens is that the gizzard, the gizzard stones, which are in their, in their uh, neck, which is used to grind down all the food, they start grinding down the glass. And of course the glass actually... It doesn't grind the glass, it actually, the glass grinds the gizzard stones and it wears them down. Eventually it gets to a point over years that um, you have to force feed, or hand feed the bird because the bird has got no gizzard, gizzard stones left to crush any food down so it can't digest anything. So that's the reason why not to use anything like that. Um, i trying to think what else really. I mean once you've got all your food and your water and you've got all your little gadgets. Oh yeah, another thing I was going to mention was swings. You can make a swing and stuff like that, and you can put little swings in there. Finches love swings. They're quite happy to play on them, sit on them all day. You wouldn't think so, but they do. <laughs> You'd normally think that was more for a budgie, or um, any, like a parrot or something, but no, finches, will, they don't mind, they can play on them all day. Um, just remember that when you clean your cage, to clean the swing as well. And make sure the metal that you're using on the swing is nothing that's toxic. I use if you can like a stainless steel so use something that's stainless steel or it's just coated with um well, i can't remember what they call it now like a plastic coating use a powder coat if you can get something which think powder coated all the better and uh, i don't really like i put well it's actually going to be in the next video uh, about toxins i don't like exposed metal i don't like any kind of exposed metal inside my aviary or cages any cages because birds will peck on it and it'll definitely do them some harm over a period of time uh, once you've got everything all settled down and you've got all your cages all organised you, and you've got your birds that are all ready to go in and then I always introduce one at a time um, it depends I, I don't like to overcrowd a cage 
if you've gone out and bought two birds at the same time that's not too bad you can put both in together uh, you don't want any nesting boxes in there straight away you don't you know, obviously you're not going to be planning on nesting you, know, you don't want them to breed straight away and especially if it's not in their season anyway you have to wait to their right season and I try to avoid nesting boxes as much as possible um, until it is the right season um, as soon as you put a nesting box in there they're going to want to nest nine, nine times out of ten they will look at that and they'll think hmm you know there's nothing else to do so they will want to start nesting so try to avoid putting nesting boxes in there uh, try to make the cage exciting you can put little balls in there and they do like mirrors as well funny enough but you want to get one that's if you're going to get a mirror get a bit, you need a couple of inches by a couple of inches etc a little tiny thing just enough they can fit the whole body in and make sure the, there's all the edges make sure all the edges of the mirror are completely covered like a plastic casing or something like that so that they can't chew on the glass around the edges because they will I've, I've found that before I put um, an odd bit in my cage before a little mirror and they started pecking around the edges on the glass and I didn't like that uh, that's just the same as chewing on the sand or the grit on the bottom so I had to get a, take it out and I had to put one in there with a plastic case but they do look they do enjoy looking at themselves admiring themselves in the mirror um, they're quite vain really so so um, that was really just a short video on um, getting started really but I'll say if you do put your birds in there and you want to watch them for a while make sure they're settling in make sure there's nobody running around keep them keep your cats keep your cats away you should, cats and birds are just they just don't go together cats you should know you shouldn't really even have birds if you've got cats um, some smaller dogs etc will probably want to have a go or be interested and other little, other little pets that you might have just keep everything away from them let them settle in and it usually takes takes about a week or so then they start getting they, they, they begin to know their routine and birds learn very fast they in fact they probably learn a hundred times faster than what we do so just to um, let them know what their routine is going to be their feeding routine um, their bathroom routine you know and when when you're going to put them to sleep and when you're going to wake them up in the morning if, you to, if you're going to keep them indoors put try to get a light timer as well so that the light comes on at the same time every morning and it goes off at the same time every night and if you have to at night time if you've got like a television that's glaring or something another light just just on the on the cage itself don't cover the whole cage because they don't like being in pitch black just cover the top part just put the towel down so if your perches are about halfway up put the towel so it goes down to about halfway just so it, re just so it reaches the perch so the bottom's got light and the top half's covered because if they do fall off the perch they want to get back on that perch and if they can't see it they're going to panic they don't like being on the floor they feel in danger you know they feel in danger with the time so make sure that they can fly back onto a perch if they do fall off because it's quite common birds fall off perch in the middle of the night and uh, they can't find their way back up they do panic so make sure that when you cover it you only cover half of the top half of the cage not the bottom half even if it's an aviary I, I mean inside my front room I have a 12 foot long 4 foot wide by uh, 6 foot high aviary and when I cover them at night I cover all the top half the bottom half is just exposed so that at night time they don't get the light the glare from the TV or any of my, my lights that are on you know, they can see the light at the bottom but they can't see the light at the top it's all it's all darkened so that they can get peaceful night rest because their resting period is very important and they need really, really in the daytime depending on the time of the year they need more sleep than others in the winter time obviously they're going to need more sleep I mean mine sleep for about about 13 14 hours during the winter time but during the summer time it's much less than that it's something like um, 10 12 hours or something like that of sleep the rest of it's daylight but make sure you keep the intervals the same they wake up the same time every morning they go to bed the same time every night that way when you're about to put them to bed they'll automatically get tired just a little bit before and then they'll start going up to roost and they know that you want to come along and cover them over because the light's going to go off etc and they'll be ready before you are uh, and the same thing when they get up in the morning they'll be what they'll be waiting they know they have like an inbuilt clock and as soon as you as soon as you you know go to put the light on and wake them up they're awake just moments before waiting for you to wake them up because they know so that's important 
and uh, obviously with the seasons they change every year so as the seasons as the seasons progress every couple of weeks you may need to adjust the clock adjust the timer a little bit that's all you have to do and then um, every every couple of weeks just add 10 minutes on or something to the time or take 10 minutes off according you know to the time of the year so anyway I can't think of anything more to add to this video about getting started but I will say one other thing again make sure everything's clean all the time I'm very hygiene conscious when it comes to your burrows like washing your hands when you handle them because most of the time when your burrow gets ill it's because you've brought something in on them you've brought some you've introduced something into the cage whether you know it or not so just make sure if you're handling your birds when you're putting you catching your birds up put them in give them all their treatments that you need a bit of mic spray if you've just bought them from a shop etc um, and just make sure you worm them as well get, uh, get yourself a nice little wormer and uh, give them, make sure you give them a good quality seed or good quality in fact give them a really good quality diet all the time they always need a good quality diet and then uh, you should be alright, you should be all set to go hopefully you'll be waking up every morning with some happy little chirps so, and thanks for watching anyway and I'll see you in the next video